guys aware of someone called Marie Kondo? Mm. Yes, Marie Kondo. She's gone big this year. She's got a series on Netflix. She's the lady who uh, is a you know tidying up consultant. In 2011, she wrote a book which is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. But she's gone big this year because of the show on Netflix, which, you know, she basically moves in and helps people deal with all of their excess shit. And let's face it, this is a good initiative because, you know, first of all, people buy too much these days. Amazon.com, etc., etc. People's lives are full of things they don't need and they have too many of the same thing, like shoes and shorts and what have you. Plus, nobody ever throws anything away. Anyone old enough will tell you that the basement just goes on getting fuller and fuller and fuller. For example, this little collection here is stuff that I uh, cleared out of one uh, of my colleagues' desks, just one. And it's the usual concoction of, you know, McDonald's ketchup sachets. This is from uh, Chicken Lickin. This one is from Nando's. You know, the old spare um, chopsticks, etc., etc. But hold on, this week in the news, a man in Oregon trapped in his Toyota Land Cruiser for five days in the snow. What? Not just him, him and his dog. <laughs> Survived, why? Because they had a whole lot of these from Taco Bell in the car. This is what they ate, this is what they survived on for the five days. Wow. Rescued, all good, all fine. So what about that, Marie Kondo? <laughs> In other news, Saudi Arabia has decided to open itself up for tourism in order to, you know, further diversify their wonderful economy. Now, we're not talking about people who are of the Muslim faith that go to Mecca and Medina. That is a huge industry, you know, people doing the annual pilgrimage. This initiative is aimed at non-religious visitors, in particular from America, Japan, China and the Eurozone area. So it involves, you know, the easing up of visa legislation and so on and so forth. But guys, guys, I don't know if this is going to work. Because think about it. In the last calendar year, what have the major news stories been out of Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Well, for starters, there was the unfortunate fellow who worked for the Washington Post who was captured in the Istanbul uh, embassy of the Saudis and basically chopped up. And this week it emerged that pieces of him were roasted afterwards. Uh, that's not great. So the visa application process could be, <clears throat> how shall I say, a little fraught. In other news, major wealthy people inside of Saudi were locked up in the Ritz-Carlton and basically forced to hand over significant parts of their NAV before they were released. So visiting Saudi hotels could be, um, <clears throat> you know, just problematic in some ways. And then we know all about the uh, persecution of uh, Saudi female activists that's been ongoing yep. for major crimes like uh, mm -hmm. driving a car. And remember, if you are a visitor to Saudi Arabia, uh, if you are a woman, you have to wear one of those big old uh, long uh, dresses and cover up at all times. <laughs> Plus, there's no booze. And generally, people have to be uh, accompanied by a guide. So uh, they've got brilliant beaches, but remember, you're not allowed to sit in them with members of the opposite sex. What? So, chaps, I don't know. Keep trying, but I don't see it. I don't see it. Not for me. <laughs> me neither. What now? A Belgian-Israeli billionaire mm -hmm. with the name Ehud Laniad. A diamond trader, he specialized in buying rough diamonds in Angola and Congo, yeah. has died aged 65 so young. as a result of complications whilst undergoing cosmetic surgery at a top laboratory type of place in Paris. Allegedly, at age 65, having a penis extension. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly. So... The man, apparently very short, he had a Napoleon con uh, complex. He lived in the most expensive penthouse in Monaco and was well known for a very lavish and wild lifestyle involving lots of partying with young, attractive models. Uh, the only time he didn't feel inadequate, apparently, was when he was having his net asset value read to him by his accountant, which is something he organized to have done a good few times every day. But... Uh, my man, at 65, having a penis extension, that's an accident waiting to happen. Ugh. 
So the world's top bridge player has been suspended because of a doping offense. What? Yeah, exactly. What does that mean? Why would you even take drugs? <laughs> it's testosterone, apparently. What? The man's name is Geir Hel Gemor. He's the world's top bridge player, but he's been head up for taking drugs which have raised significantly his testosterone level. I mean, it's not like he's a cyclist or a, you know, um, weightlifter. The man's playing bridge. In fact, if anything, taking these kinds of drugs could give you heart problems. And as we know, you know, hearts are one of the suits in bridge. So you don't want to be having heart problems while you're playing that game. But the problem apparently, apparently, is that bridge is an Olympic sport. That's the original problem. That meant that the World Bridge Federation joined the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, and then they agreed to be subject to the same rules for doping and anti-doping that the whole of the IOC subscribes to. Yeah. Anyway, this guy's been had up for a tax evasion in the past, so maybe he's just one of those guys who uh, likes to uh, <laughs> live on the edge a little bit, you know? The World Bridge Champion. Mm -mm.